is for an, uh, the establishment of a district called the Obsolete Property Rehab District. This is in accordance with Public Act 146 of 2000. Uh, the owner of the property listed with owner of the property located within this proposed district is requesting that a district be established. Once this district is established, the owner of this property, which is an obsolete property as deemed obsolete by the city assessor, can apply for an abatement of taxes on the building. The building uh, is scheduled to be rehabbed for a use. It won't be an obsolete property after the building is rehabbed, but I'll talk a little more about it after we get to the approval of the application. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Mays. Yeah, my name is Eric Mays. I'm at 125 East Russell. And I rise and speak on this one, um, Council President Kincaid and the rest of the council, because it's the Public Act 146. Um, and I experienced Public Act 146 back in July of 2012. It was a um, district. Um, I think Robert David Allen was in the application. Some say Genesee Towers as well. It was a lot of confusion, but I was arrested after speaking over three minutes at this particular microphone in that public hearing. And so now I hear Public Act 146 again, and so I rise. If it's three minutes, allegedly three minutes again, you cut me off at two and a half and then we can avoid some problems. But I think this public hearing is just like the other one was supposed to be. Once I subpoenaed the then emergency manager, Mike Brown, who coincidentally is the emergency manager now, we had a trial. And what I want the council to understand is that in that trial, Mike Brown testified, sworn under oath, that he instructed the city attorney then Peter Bay to follow the guidelines that was already in place. Now that district and that proceeding is legally in Judge Nethercutt's court right now. And when I seen the transcripts, which I have the transcripts from that proceeding, Mike Brown directed the city attorney to follow the guidelines, quote, that was already in place. I'm here to let the council know that this public hearing is different from that one. You've got a quorum. You've got council persons seated. And if the council was not here, my understanding is that under Public Act 436, just like under Public Act 4, Mike Brown could be here acting in place of the council. Um, neither the council nor Mike Brown was here under Public Act 146 for the alleged tax abatements for what they feel they already got. I believe this is a proper public hearing because you've got one or the other here this time. You've got the council here. And so I think that this is a legal public hearing. The other one, I know for a fact, whatever it was, it wasn't a public hearing of the legislative body under Public Act 146. And so I think there are some tax abatements that people think they got that might very well be in jeopardy. The concern that I have when it comes to this after that bad experience before, after we spoke at the public hearing on July 2nd, 2012, no action took place. Now, I heard Glenda say, if I'm saying the name right, I heard her say that after the hearing, she would communicate again as it relates to the action. So that leads me to believe that in this public hearing, unlike that public hearing, it will be a public hearing, and then the legislative body will take action. When I looked at the records from the other public hearing, Nothing happened at that public hearing. The action was taken later. Even the district was established wrong. The documents in the application, they didn't have the proper signatures from the clerk. 
I went to the tax commission and they said, Mr. Mays, when I spoke at the tax commission in Lansing, because all of this is granted through the tax commission and the, de and the treasury department. They say, Mr. Mays, we're going to change some of these administrative rules because the rules on the application that dictated certain action to take place at the hearing, and I think you just alluded to that, didn't take place at that hearing. They took place days later. So I'm going to watch this process close. I know when we spoke at the public hearing before, we could get a copy of the application in the back. And that application really did me some good because it gave the directions of what the local government unit should do after the public hearing. It had a place for the clerk's signature. It had a place um, for everybody's signature, and the clerk's signature was stamped on. I didn't know who stamped it. The date of the application was after the date of the hearing, and it was impossible to have a hearing before the date of the application. So that thing on the Public Act 146 was so screwed up and I'm telling you, I believe that that's going to have to be redone. But I believe that this one is starting out a little better. I think three minutes has passed and I ain't been arrested. We've got the legislative body here in itself. But there you had neither one. You had Crystal Olmstead and Jason Lawrence conducting the hearing. And neither one of them had the power to serve or act as the legislative body. The position I took then, I'm going to take now. If you're going to give tax abatements to the downtown district, then consider giving tax abatements to the neighborhoods in the sense of home businesses. There's an ordinance on the book that deals with home businesses. The last time it's been pulled out and amended, Woodrow Stanley was the councilman in the second ward. But I'm here to tell you if I've operated a home business out of my house for over 20 or 30 years. And I've got, while some people was getting income tax refunds of five and 6,000 because of my business deductions in my home, I had two refunds that I'm proud of in 06 my refund was, I think, $21,000, that check came. And then in 07, my income tax refund was $23,000, that check came. And then I was audited for both years. And when I finished the audit with the IRS, they owed me another $4,800, and I got that. So my point is this. We have an opportunity not just to do tax abatements for downtown, but we can educate the community and do tax abatements for the homes. And when you give relief to the homes through tax abatements and other unique opportunities, it offsets the illegal water rates and the illegal street light assessments. And I'm qualifying them and calling them illegal because I don't believe in emergency managers. I believe people vote for people, and under democracy, those people represent them. And if you don't have that, you have nothing. So I'll say to you, this is a better procedure under Public Act 146 than I experienced. I'll wait to see what the council does. I would make a recommendation, I don't know if this is time sensitive, but the same people I involved who debacled the Public Act 146 um, tax abatement hearing, and if I was sitting on the council, they would have to answer questions about that one before I give them this one. So Eric Mays has taken a position. They can't get this one from me until they talk about what they did wrong with the other one. I might give them this one if Glenda told me it was time sensitive, but me, politically, I'm going to use this one 
to bring them in to talk about the other one. And then I'm also ask the powers to be about tax abatements for people in the neighborhoods. Whatever position this council gets from there, or from what I said, it'll be fine. This ain't a do or die one. Y'all make your own decisions based upon what you want to do. I feel no one way or another about how this procedure go. But God bless this one compared to the one that we experienced on July 2nd, 2012. Thank you. Mr. President. Just, just to clarify for the uh, public, we are taking no action tonight. We have no authority to take action. The emergency manager hasn't given us the ability to take action. He'll ultimately take action. He just didn't want to sit through public hearing and listen to the public comments, I guess, so he told us we had to do that. Um, but we, we have no ability to take action tonight. There's nothing before us to take action. There's no tonight. resolutions before us tonight. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council on this public hearing? Is there anyone else that would like? Mr. Dumas? Good evening. My name is A.C. Dumas, and I reside at 533 East Rankin Street in the Third Ward. I do want to say that while this body does not or will not take any action on the, this public hearing, I want to say for the record that I'm against it. I think if we have any, when businesses, especially downtown, General Motors and all those, and we have given them tax abatements, uh, Brownfield and everything else, that means they don't pay taxes or they pay reduced taxes. While the citizens of the city of Flint who are struggling, who are trying to pay their property taxes, get no relief from either this council or the mayor's office or the emergency financial manager. I think it's an atrocity when you, uh, you know, the Capitol Theater, and it's not the first time they got uh, tax money, it's not the first time they got grant money uh, for a facility downtown. I make this analogy that, you know, you can have all the beautiful downtown you want, and the neighborhoods are, have gone to pot. Yeah. That's a good, good word. You can make beautiful downtown, you can have your beautiful crims, you can have your beautiful back to the bricks, but when you come in the neighborhood, the people that have to pay the bills are the residents of the city of Flint. So when you give or you have before, you gave General Motors tax abatements, many of them. You closed down uh, Harrison Street or First Street, whatever, that street that was for the Flint Journal, remember that? I was here, I've been come down this council along than anyone sitting on this council without reservation. Longer than anyone that speaks at this mic. I've been coming down to this city council. I talked about all the world, a festival marketplace. How the demise would be soon because most people went to uh, the factories to work, make a living, and after they got off work they would not be going down to all the world to see cars because they were producing cars and trucks. You know, I talked about uh, what we needed was a convention center in Flint. What we needed was hotels, better hotels, to bring conventions here. That never came to fruition. But uh, Grand Blank, uh, they have a convention, uh, someone to Genesis, and they go out there. They spend the money out there. Flint, we don't. We talked about